Hey guys, my name is David. Welcome to Fearless TV. We're so excited you've joined us today. I know this message is going to impact you in such a powerful way. If you've been watching our previous messages or even today, you're just positively impacted or really moved by this message. We encourage you to share it with a friend. Put it on your Facebook, your Instagram story. We want to get the word out about what God is doing through Fearless here in LA. Or if you're saying, hey, how do I further partner with the mission of what Fearless is doing, what God is really doing through our church, in downtown LA, reaching these, these people who don't know Jesus, we have our Fearless Partnerships. It's basically just a group of people who are giving monthly, whether a part of our church or your state's away, and you're just saying, I want to sow into what God is doing. You can give monthly to the vision of Fearless. You can go to fearlessla.com, click on the giving link. There's a whole description in there. I encourage you to read about it, pray on it, and just be obedient to the voice of God as He speaks to you. Other than that, check out this amazing message from our pastor. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. How's everyone doing tonight? Well, no matter how you're doing, I'm glad you're here tonight. And uh, I, have a, I have a word for you tonight. And I actually have in-ears, so I don't yell this time <laughs> over you. So you can honk as much as you want to honk. And uh, hey, we're thankful for you coming out tonight. Uh, we, we don't want to take a whole bunch of your time. We want to invest in you tonight. And uh, we want to inject the word of God. You can roll down your windows if you want. You don't have to, uh, you know. Uh, we're excited that you're here tonight. I'd love to see some of your faces. I can see some of you through the windows of your car. And uh, man, my wife offers her love. She is at home with all three kids holding down the fort tonight. And uh, man, we, we're just so excited that you came tonight. We're going to, we, we, we loved what was happening through this so much that we just said, hey, every Friday night, we're going to do this driving thing, rain or shine. We got a great canopy above us. So if you're... <laughs> If, you're, uh, if you enjoy these, we're going to be doing them every Friday night with a hot meal. And then, all, of course, again, like David said, on Wednesdays, we do a, a car wash and a food. And so from 3 to 6 every Wednesday, uh, groceries, a car wash and groceries. We've been getting some really good groceries. So if you need groceries or you know anyone that needs them or you just want to come drop off some groceries or wash some cars with us, you can do that. We, we, we believe there are, are, are two things as human beings that we have right to, right? We have right to politics, that, to our opinion, and we have right to our theology, our religion. Uh, but at the same time, as kingdom folk, we, we have the right to that. But as kingdom folk, our duty is to love and to serve. Our duty is to love and to serve. And so I say that because our, our world is full of a lot of uh, opinions today about all kinds of things, even the pandemic. There's a lot of opinions, and I think as a church, our greatest uh, opinion is to love our city till they ask why, and this, you being here tonight, is a part of us just attempting to do that, uh, and, and we're, not, we're not here just to tell you about Jesus, we're here to show you Jesus, and uh, I think Jesus would be right out here on this platform, right out here serving, taking video, right out here loving people, giving out hot meals, so if you don't know anything about Jesus, uh, we, we want to tell you tonight, he is a loving God. Uh, he's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. And he doesn't want to make bad people good. He wants to give dead people life. When I was 17 years old, uh, I, I was pretty dead. And uh, I'll wake up dead, go to sleep dead. I thought I could find it in certain things, in, in a girlfriend or uh, my school or whatever I was trying to achieve. But I learned really fast uh, that li this life does not wait on the wounded. This life, when you're wounded, will kick you when you're down. But I learned that there was a God that even when no one else was there, no church, no pastor, no even friends, that there was a God who spoke to me and said, Jeremy, I'm not here to make you good. I'm here to bring you to life. And when I was 17 years old, I prayed a prayer and I received Jesus into my life. I was in the middle of a bad situation. And uh, I, 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 one of my best friends had just committed suicide. And I had an opportunity to, to lead him to, at the moment, I had religion. And to lead him to that, and I didn't because it wasn't real to me. But the moment Jesus came into my life, everything in my life changed. I never thought I would be a pastor, but here I am just taking my second chance to tell somebody else that Jesus loves you. I want to tell you that Jesus loves you tonight. He's for you, not against you. And he's proud of you. He's proud of you for being here tonight on this Friday night. You could be a lot of places. You could be sitting at home saying, man, I'm, I'm not going to go out. I'm too worried about what might happen. Or, and you're here tonight, not just because you needed a hot meal. You came here tonight to receive something good 
from God to receive some hope tonight. So I just want to encourage you. Come on. Heaven is cheering you on. We're going to pray real quick and then we're going to get started. Jesus, we thank you for tonight. I thank you for these amazing people. And I thank you that tonight you have not forsaken us, but you are right here with us, God, loving on us, God. Lord, I pray right now that no matter what we're going through and what we're facing, Lord, you are here in the midst of this place. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. <laughs> amen. There we go. That's an amen. I heard a honk honk. Is amen. I want to read this to you um, in light of kind of what's going on in our world today. Um, you know, just today uh, we heard that justice has been served on uh, the officer that murdered uh, George Floyd. And we've been talking about this uh, situation as a church. Obviously, we all know we're smart enough to realize that racism is, is not something new. And, it, and it's not coming up again. It's always been here. And, and the fact that we're seeing it in this kind of light, uh, in this kind of extremeness, is just because we can film it now. And we are excited that justice has been served on this situation. And I want to read you something that I, that I really felt like God was um, speaking to me today about uh, what we can do as believers in a situation like this. Now, obviously, unless you're blind, you can see that I am white. <laughs> That's the color of my skin. I can't change that. I can't uh, wish that away. I can't wish to be. This is the, the skin tone God gave me. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I cannot hurt when other people are hurting that I cannot stand with my brothers and sisters when they're hurting, and I cannot be a voice to the voiceless uh, as a believer. And I just want to encourage you today. I, I'm married. I have an amazing wife. And as you can see, I am also a man. I am not a woman. I'll, I'll never have a child, no matter if, even if I wanted to. I could not have a child. But my wife got pregnant. I walked with her through her pregnancy. In fact, many times in my life, uh, it almost looked like I was pregnant with her. She, she would laugh because as she got a belly, I got a belly. As she would get pain in her leg, I would get pain. They call it, they call it uh, sympathy pains. And I would go through this with her. If, if you haven't had a wife that's pregnant yet, just wait. It, it will come. And you can't complain about it because you're not the one in it. And, but you, you might feel those phantom pains. And so I went through her with that. And each doctor visit, and every time she would go, and different things, and we were getting the apps together, and we were learning together as this child was, was taking over her body, as she was sacrificing her body for our family. And then we went in to get to deliver the baby, and I'm there walking with her down the halls, and, and all the way through the, through the delivery. Uh, my wife doesn't have easy deliveries. Come on, honk, honk at me if you, you're a woman out there and don't have easy deliveries. Let me, let me hear you. Come on, shout out to all the moms out there. The, after the first child that my wife uh, had, I called my mom immediately and said, Mom, I am so sorry for every time that I did not uh, show you love. Every word I did not write in your card. I mean, I never wrote enough. After what I see my wife go through to give birth to our first child, I, was, I just felt embarrassed how I had treated my mom. And I had treated my mom pretty good, but after seeing that, I'm like, hey, come on, moms are G's. Come on, that's, that's all I'm saying. Every mom out there, shout out to every woman. And, uh, you know, so with my wife, she hasn't had easy pregnancy. In fact, our first daughter, uh, her, the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck uh, when she gave birth. And so every few pushes, the, her heart rate would drop, and she was, like, dying as she would push. We thank God through prayer and scripture all around the room and coaching Man, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was breathing with my wife. I almost passed out a couple of times. I was breathing with my wife. I was, I was pushing, even though I had nothing to push out. I was there right there with her, each child. And, and I learned to not say anything. Sometimes my wife, she'll go through fits of anger uh, in that moment. And she might even say a few choice words to me uh, because I got her into this mess. As, as Amen, it takes two to tango. And, and so, you know, she may look at me and say a few things, and I ain't saying anything back. I'm just like, all right, honey, come on. You got this. I'm, I'm right here with you. Come on, we're going to make it through this together. Now, now, let me say this. I have never been pregnant because I'm a man and men don't get pregnant. But I, but I am in love with my wife and on board with my wife to the, to the degree that when she's going through pain, I'm going to be going through pain right there with her. I may not feel that pain, 
but I'm going to stand with her in her pain, in her breathing, in her moments, and I'm going to walk with her through that situation. This is the best way I can describe how we as believers can walk with our fellow brothers and sisters who right now are going through pain and social injustice. If, if you are white, this is a great way that you can say, you know what, God, I'm, I'm holding hands. I may not understand because I've never experienced that, but you know what? I'm not leaving your side. I'm here to breathe with you all the way, and I'm not taking your emotions out, out of hand. I'm saying whatever you got to say, say it, and I, we're going to get through this together. Amen? Amen. Romans 12, 9 says this, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Come on, we got to hate what is evil. I'm tired of us waiting till all the facts come out. If there is evil, we got to hate what is evil. Amen? We got to cling to what is good. Come on, we can't just hate evil. We also have to cling to God. If we let go of God and hate what is evil, we will become the evil we hate. But what we got to do through every situation is we got to hate what is evil and we got to cling to what is good. Come on, we hold on to the fact that God, his love for us outweighs anything that we could ever go through. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal. Come on, we got to get zeal for loving each other. But keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality, come on, we got to practice loving on each other, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice, come on, we're going to rejoice with those who rejoice, and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, I love that he says that because y'all know it isn't always possible to get along with everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you. Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil, but overcome. Uh, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Come on, this is what we're going to do, church. We're going to overcome evil with good. Come on, tonight they said the riots are happening in downtown Adelaide, the protests. Some of it is turning ugly. As believers, we are not going to do rioting like that. We will protest. We will say, you know what, this is not okay. But when we start destroying businesses, we are not living out this verse. We are not living out the gospel. But tonight we are also not canceling things like this because Jesus needs to be lifted up in this city. Come on, we are protesting right here, right now, saying we're going to spread love around this city. And we're going to overcome evil with good. You know what, this weekend is, is Pentecost Sunday. This weekend is Pentecost Sunday. And all that means is 50. Somebody say 50. 50. That means 50. It's literally 50 days after, after Jesus rose from the grave. 50 days after Jesus rose from the grave, they celebrated Pentecost. And we celebrate Pentecost. This weekend represents the, the word Pentecost 50 days after Jesus rose from the grave. You know what happened in that that Pentecost moment, it was something called the upper room. Now, if you grew up in church, you know what this is. It wasn't a church building. It was a house, a lot like we're having church right now in our houses. It was the upper room of a house, and the believers of Christ, the, the God followers of Jesus, were in hiding because Jesus had died on a cross, a murderer's death. They went back to their trades. They went back to what they were in hiding. They were in a pandemic of fear. And Jesus shows back up and freaks most of them out, by the way, if, if, if uh, you know, 
Jesus died and you were following him and they buried him and you watched him go into that grave and all of a sudden you started seeing Jesus appear to you again, it would freak you out. And Jesus began to teach them and he began to open their minds and he began to open their hearts again. And he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and wait and wait for me. I'm going to send you a gift that my father promised. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. And so this group of disciples, 120 of them, went and they waited in an upper room. And in this upper room, they began to gather just like this. And they were praying and they were worshiping. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, suddenly the sound from heaven, a mighty roaring windstorm appeared and it filled the house where they were sitting and the presence of God filled this house and they begin to sing out to God in other languages in other uh, dialects you imagine if someone here doesn't speak Spanish and the presence of God hit this place and all of a sudden you begin to speak Spanish and praise God that, that would be pretty radical I would imagine I don't speak Spanish I wish I did I failed Spanish in high school uh, Somebody pray for me. Uh, God brings me to L.A. to a place where I need to learn how to speak Spanish. And, 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 and so you imagine if, if the presence of God hit this place and I just started speaking in fluent Spanish. How awesome would that be? I'm still praying for that moment myself. And, and so these people begin to speak in other dialects. And, we call, and, and now we call that speaking in t other tongues or other languages. And the people that were there in the city at that time heard them speaking these things out. And Peter, who right before this moment was running and hiding, and he was full of fear, but God filled him with his presence. Whenever God fills your life, fear has to leave. Anxiety has to leave. Depression has to leave. Can I, can I tell you this? The reason why I failed Spanish in high school was because I couldn't give the speeches. Every time I'd get up there to give a speech or to get in front of people, I, I would almost just run out of the room crying or afraid. And here's what I do now with my life. I give speeches about Jesus. See, when Jesus comes in, when, when, when his presence comes into your life, that greatest thing that you fear has to leave. And Peter's up there in this upper room. He's filled with the presence of God. And the Bible says that he gives the first sermon, the first message ever in the church. The church had not existed yet, and Peter gets up and he speaks this message. He says, these, these people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. I mean, who gets drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning? Unless you're in quarantine, praise God. In Acts chapter 16, and no one you see here, this was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Come on, do we have any all people in this house today? Come on, I don't, I don't, I don't care what color your skin is. You're all people. Come on, do, do we have some all people in this house today? God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. That means the teenagers here. That means the older folk here. The young at heart. That means, that means the men. That means the women. God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all people and, and your sons and your daughters. Do we have any sons in the house tonight? Come on, any sons up in those cars if you're a son? Do we have any daughters in the house? Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit on my men and my women alike. They will prophesy. I will show signs and wonders in heaven. And then it goes on to say, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be filled. I brought a, uh, a little prop up here tonight. We're really getting into this now. I got props and all kinds of things. Brought a little prop up here tonight. And uh, God says, look, I'm pouring out from heaven tonight. I'm looking for some all people. I, I don't, you, you, there's no qualification. You just got to be a container. You just got to be willing to, to open your life and say, I'm right here, God. And God says, in the last days, I want to pour out my spirit. Now, God's not pouring out something impure. God's not pouring out religion. He's not pouring out church. He's not pouring out being good. He's not pouring out money. He's, not, he's pouring out himself. He's not pouring out an angel from heaven. He says, look, I'm just pouring out me. I, I want to put all of me inside of all of you. And so God says, in the last days, I'm going I'm to pour out on a generation. Here's the good news about this. It doesn't matter if you're... If you've never met God in your life, you say, man, tonight's my first night ever coming to church. Can I consider this church? Well, of course you can because we are the church. Tonight you're here for the first time and God goes, you qualify. 
You say, well, I haven't been perfect. No, you qualify. Well, I looked at something last night. God says, you qualify. I'm just looking for a container. I'm looking for something that will contain my glory. And, and this Pentecost, this is what we're referring to. This moment of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus rose from the grave, they went into this upper room and God poured out and he filled them up. And, and then the Bible says he poured them overflow. See, Pentecost means to fill overflow, to fill overflow. Now, I won't do this uh, on my iPad, but I'm going to do this on this table. When God talks about Pentecost, he doesn't want to just pour out and stop. God's going to keep pouring. God's going to keep pouring. God's going to keep pouring. He wants to keep pouring in your life. See, see, this is the good news. No matter how much of you you pour out, God's got more. God's got more. He wants to, how am I going to, how am I going to give out more love? I don't have any love. God says, don't worry. You don't have to be the, you don't have to be the source of love. You just got to be the container of love. And I am the source of love. He wants to pour out in your life. This is what Pentecost means. See, here's Pentecost. This is this weekend. Pentecost. To fill overflow. To fill overflow. See, look, here's what happens when Pentecost starts hitting your life. When there's a shaking. How many guys would agree right now there's a shaking going on in our world? How many guys would agree with, 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 with the riots? And, and if you look at Minneapolis, it's burning. It's on fire. Uh, people being hurt. People dying in the streets. Being judged on the sidewalks because of the color of their skin. People in this pandemic dying in hospitals. 100,000 deaths. Just in America, how many guys would believe we're in a shaking right now? We're in a shaking moment right now. And if you're shaking and there's nothing in you, then nothing comes out. But when God begins to fill you overflow and the shaking starts happening, the things inside of you start coming out. And I don't know about you, but love's been coming out lately. Joy's been coming out lately. Peace has been coming out. And I could say it's not from me. It's not from my container. It's for the simple fact that I'm an all people. And God said, Jeremy, I want to pour out into your life. And tonight, I don't know who you are. And I speak the sermon that Peter spoke on that day. Your young men, your young women, your old women, your old men, God has something for you tonight. And if you would just say, God, I'm here and I'm ready to be a container. Tonight is... Tonight, this weekend, this is the weekend of Pentecost. This, this is the moment where God goes, I want to fill overflow. You know why that means fill overflow? It's because seven times seven. What's the number? If you times seven times seven, it gets 49. You get 49. You don't get 50. You get 49. Seven times seven. We know that seven is the number of God. Seven is the number of perfection. God is multiplying his perfection, 7 times 7, 49. What's 50? It's one more. God says, I don't want to fill you to perfect. I don't want to fill you just to the God factor. I want to fill your life overflow. I don't know about you, but I want an overflow God in my life, and I need it now more than ever before. I need God's overflow for the shakings of life. There are people waiting all around me to taste of what's in my life. And if I could be shaken with God in me, there is no one who won't be touched by his grace and his love. Come on, if you need that tonight, we're going to worship another song. I just want to encourage you tonight. You are not alone. God loves you. He's for you. He, he's with us in this storm. He's with us in this moment. That doesn't mean you need to be silent. That means you need to begin to prophesy. What does the word to prophesy mean? It means to speak out at what isn't as though it is. Begin to say to this city, begin to say over this town, we, we speak justice over this town. We speak love over our world. We speak that people wouldn't be judged by the color of their skin, but by the character in their heart. We believe right now that God is gonna spread love through this place fearlessly, starting right here, right now. This is his day. This is his moment. He's not surprised. He's not surprised by what was in those men's hearts. He wasn't shocked, just as he's not shocked at what's in our heart. Because in our heart is hate and anger, frustration and fear. But if we would just lift up our hands, whatever is stuck in the container, when you start pouring in, it starts coming out. 
And I believe that the things that when God starts pouring in, he starts cleaning us out at the same time. Come on, you say, I'm not worthy of it. Well, come on. The only way you begin to get worthy of it is you allow him to pour into your life. God, look, none of us are worthy. None of us deserve his grace. None of us deserve his love. That's why it's the good news. It's the good news because we didn't earn it. We didn't pray it in. We didn't fast it in. We didn't come to church enough to deserve what God has for us. But he chooses us. He say, not me. Not me. Yeah, you. Right there in your car. The people I can't see behind the windshields. God sees you. And he hears you. And he loves you. And he says, today, why don't you prophesy? Why don't you speak out into what isn't what you want to see? God, I want you in my life. I want new. I want, I want newness for my family. I, I, want to, I want my marriage to be restored. I, I want my kids to be healthy. I, I want health in my body. I, I want wholeness in my finances. I want, I want justice in our world. I want equality in our world, God. I, I want people to love each other. I, I, want, I want the church to be open again. I, I, I want this world to know. Come on, let's pray. Jesus, I pray a prayer of blessing over this crowd. Come on, if you're praying tonight, we say, Jesus, come into my life. Fill me up. Overflow. Pentecost. Seven times seven plus one. Seven times seven plus one. Overflow. Fifty days after you, you rose from the cross, you displayed the whole point of what you were doing. You were filling up your sons and your daughters. You We're no longer going to be on this earth, but you were going to live in us in an overflow state. God, I pray you would help us to not damn you up, to not hold you back. We would let you flow out of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.